Good morning. The title of the devotional this morning is An Unusual Event. An Unusual Event. Of all the times that Jesus uses his powers to accomplish some special goal, the one that has intrigued me the most is what is usually called turning the water into wine. The event occurs in a small town in Galilee called Cana, and the occasion is a wedding feast, a joyous occasion, an extremely joyous occasion for the Jewish religion, and they celebrated for a whole week. John's Gospel, chapter 2, relates the story of this good news. I invite you to read the passage for yourself so you get the feel of it within you. I'm going to look at this event from the viewpoint of the participants, some of the participants. You'll be aware, as you should be, that I'm mind reading. I don't know exactly what each person thought, thinking, feeling, questioning, searching for an answer as to why Jesus uses his powers in this particular and most unusual way. Most of the times that Jesus uses his powers, it is to heal persons in one way or another. This, however, is not true in this particular event. The guests may see this event as very beneficial to them. They are running out of wine, which would be quite a tragedy in that time and culture. And this one man, Jesus, has somehow mysteriously been able to turn the water into wine. And they're, they're just flabbergasted. They wouldn't, use, they wouldn't use that word. Jesus has mysteriously somehow been able to turn water into wine, and they now have the best wine of the evening. When the steward tasted this water changed into wine, he declared, everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. He not only has a taste for wine, as the good wine st steward should, knowing the best from the inferior, but he knows the procedure most everyone follows in serving which wine first and which one later. His amaz amazement and surprise comes in recognize the reversal of the usual sequence. Surprise, surprise something new and different. And this Jesus did it by some sort of magic process. He doesn't know how Jesus did it. He just knows that Jesus, one of the guests, turned the water into wine. The servants, we don't know how many, we don't know their names. The servants, and there were always some around, they're a vital part of this story because they carry out Jesus' instructions to them. Fill the jars with water. They do as they are told and bring back the jars filled with water. Jesus then instructs them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. They are servants doing what they are told to do. They are an important step in the whole event and are very likely as surprised as anyone else at the outcome. The water has been changed into good wine by this guest named Jesus. Wow. Huh. Let's keep him around for some of our weddings and special events. We'll just get some water and he can magically change it into wine somehow. We don't know how he does it, but he does do it. He changes water into wine. 
I wonder what other tricks he might do for us. Maybe one for me or one of my family. Let's keep him on. He's wonderful and powerful, and let's keep him around. The conversation between Jesus and his mother may be central to our understanding of this very special event. In fact, I think it is crucial to our looking at the event in a very special way. When the wine gave out is the beginning point, Jesus' mother says to Jesus, they have no wine. Jesus responds in a quite unusual way. He calls his mother woman, an unusual and very unusual name for his own mother. What Kern, and she says, what concerns us is that, what, con what, what concern is that to you and me? Mary, Jesus' mother, simply says to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Is Mary expecting Jesus to solve the major problem of the wine running out? Is this somehow a statement of Mary's faith in the powers of Jesus to solve people's problems? Does she see this as a vital opportunity for Jesus to begin to show what kind of a special person he is? Are some of the messages that she received before Jesus was born and after his birth are some of those beginning to run through her mind? What kind of a person is this son of mine, this Jesus? Let's give my son an opportunity to do something special for everyone to see. And Jesus, responding to his mother's need and also the need of the occasion for more wine for everybody, he uses his power to, quote, change the water into wine. For her, in response to his faith in Jesus, is Jesus' action a response to Mary's faith in him and as a sign, which Jesus notes in looking at the event from a historical perspective, he says this is, this is the first of his signs revealing his glory with the result that his disciples believed in him. Out of all of the viewpoints and perhaps some others that you might think of, which one speaks the loudest to you? Why does Jesus, why did Jesus use his power in this very unusual way in this very most significant occasion, do you see Jesus as the Christ through this unusual event? Does John want you to see Jesus as the Christ through this sign? Is Jesus, is Jesus your Christ partially because you believe that he did this for a specific purpose and although we may not understand it fully, it can help us, it might help us to believe Jesus is the Son of God. I'll leave that question to you because I don't think I have an absolute answer, but perhaps you might want to investigate which viewpoint is the most interesting to you. I hope you'll think about it.